I'm in a series called Devotion, and today I want to talk about someone in the Bible who's very dear to me, whose example to me is something I want for all of us. In Hebrews chapter 11, his name is, of course, Enoch. Enoch had a walk with God that was absolutely classic and picture perfect to what I as a pastor want to see for people that are not only here in the auditorium, but for those that are watching. In Hebrews chapter 11, it says in verse number four, it says, by faith offered, by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he, being dead, still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. Notice that about Enoch. Enoch, as we're going to see in Genesis 5 in just a second, he walked so closely in devotion to God that absolutely to a point where God literally took him away and uh, he did not see death. And it was found in him because God had taken him away that before he was taken away, he had this testimony testimony that he pleased God. That is something as a pastor, as a senior leader, that is so important to me as far as individual lives. I want you to be successful in every area and every endeavor of your life, but the most successful thing I want you to have said about your life is that you please God. And it says here in verse 6, it says, but without faith it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Over in the book of Genesis, going from Hebrews to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 5. Again, Genesis 5 is very interesting because it is the family uh, legacy or chronology or the the famous the the legacy or the outline of Adam's family in this entire chapter but over in verse number 21 notice what it says here in Genesis 5 21 as we look at and again it's fascinating the length of days that these people lived here in chapter 5 but anyway moving right along for the sake of time that's not what I want to emphasize it says in verse number 21 or it says that Enoch lives 65 years, and then he begot Methuselah. And then after this, it says in verse 22, after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. And then notice what it says in verse number 23. It says, all the days of Enoch were 365 years, verse number 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Notice that phrase. Twice it mentions that Enoch walks with God. So there came a place in his life when he had this child, Methuselah, and actually, as you read the rest of this chapter, you'll see that Methuselah is a part of the lineage of Noah. But it's interesting here that at 65 years old, he has this change of life. And for the next 300 years, he has this testimony that he walks with God. And you say, well, Pastor Brian, that's great. But what does that mean today? Well, it means to to me a lot of things. First of all, to walk with God is to be devoted to him. To walk with God is to walk in love and respect and admiration to who God is. And I think that's so important in his mission today. A lot of people love God because they want to go to heaven. Of course you want to go to heaven. Who wants to go to hell? But is there that respect to him, that admiration of who he is? You know, he, we sing about his faithfulness, but as you look in the Bible, as you look through time, as you look through history, as you look in your own life, you see his faithfulness. Even though there's a lot of questions, even though there's a lot of problems, a lot of pressures, a lot of situations, a lot of things that may not be answered or happen in the way you want them to happen. But for us as believers, I would rather trust trust in God than trust in myself or trust in the world's way. And Enoch, in the midst of all this, in this godless situation that he was fighting, he walked with God. And I know that, again, you could say figuratively, that's that's what it says right here. But you know, there's something in that today that we can look at. And there's three things I just want to share with you that are observations of mine. And again, this gentleman is probably the most fascinating part of the entire Bible as far as the phraseology connected to his name. I mean, Jesus, of course, was number one. Of course, the Apostle Paul, you know, King David, I could go down the line. But of the few verses about Enoch, he had such a relationship with God. And again, I think the key is that God was so in tune with him or vice versa that God literally said, hey, I just want you to come with me. I love the story the little girl shared in Sunday school about Enoch. She said, Enoch was walking with God so close one day that they got so far from Enoch's house that God turned to Enoch and said, listen, you're too far away from home. Come on up to my house. And that's the rest of the story. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Did it happen that way? I don't know if it happened that way, but you know what? There is something to look at this great man of God. Number one, Enoch went in the same direction as God. 
I think when you're walking with someone, you got to go in the same direction as them. Over in Hebrews chapter 3, verse number 15, this is something that as a pastor uh, is so foundational to me as, as a senior leader for your life. Hebrews 3.15, notice what it says here. Hebrews 3.15, listen to this. And again, this is, this is so important. Today, if you will hear his voice, that to me captures my desire for you as a believer, that every day that you can not only hear the voice of the Word of God, this book speaking to you, but the voice of the Holy Spirit leading you. That is so important to me because if you're going in the same direction from God, you're going to hear his voice. And if you're not walking in the same direction as him, then it's time for a, it's a, you know, it's a good time for self-examination. But God is forever moving, ladies and gentlemen. He is moving throughout the earth, whether we see it or not, whether we realize it or not, whether we question it and say, well, man, Pastor Brian, there's some things going on that I don't quite understand. Me too. <laughs> there's a lot I don't understand, especially as you turn the news and instant news, instant things happening, a lot of questions about this, a lot of questions about that. But our Father God is moving and history shows how he's moving and history is going to show how he's moved during this time. As we look back, the question is, are you going in the same direction that he's going in because he wants you to walk with him. He wants you to walk with him. And you know, being led by the Holy Spirit is an ongoing process. I wish we could say we could arrive at this instantaneous moment of knowing to hear the voice of God more clearly, but it's a walk by faith. I remember a couple of years ago when I had this endeavor with a partner, a friend of mine, um, his name was Randy Stroman, and we were working together. He was a part of the John Maxwell organization, and we developed a program called Values-Based Leadership Training, and we did it for the National Football League, and we were working with Troy Vincent, the Vice President of Operations for the NFL. We had a series of meetings in New York and here in Texas, and just endeavoring to, again, Troy is a believer, seeking God's will about training, values-based leadership training for the NFL offices there in New York. And the more I got into that, the more I did not have a peace about it, but yet it was a good thing. It was, I thought, a godly idea. It was a noble idea. But the more I moved into it, the further I got into contract negotiations, and we went to New York to the offices to negotiate and came back, I just didn't have a peace about it. So we tabled the idea for 90 days, and then we just said, we'll develop it as far as pursuing this after that. Well, sure enough, after that 90 days, about 120 days later, things with the NFL begin to go in another direction. And I am so thankful that God did not keep me in that situation or keep me connected to them because the way the NFL went is not to the way I like to see things go as far as certain beliefs in my own life and convictions that I have. And so I am so thankful that God protected me of that. And even though I was hearing his voice and I was operating in the peace of God, I had an uneasy feeling. But at the same time, I was walking in an area, now listen to this, that I had no familiarity with. I'd never been down this pathway before. So everything was new to me. But as I was learning to listen to the voice of God, being learned to be led of the Holy Spirit, and trust him and not force something to happen and allow him to take charge and control, then eventually the good news is that the thing worked out where the NFL went one way and I went the other, and I'm so glad that God protected me from that situation. As a matter of fact, I had my uh, usual call at the first year with Randy just a couple of days ago, and we just sort of stopped and said, thank you, Jesus, for protecting us, not necessarily from the NFL or from Troy Vincent. It's just that they were going one direction, and we were going in another, and I'm glad I went the direction I was going in. And that may be the same thing with your life. Maybe it's not a situation like that, but you never know as you're walking with God you may be going down a pathway, and he gently is nudging you this way. Listen, even though you may not understand it, I promise you in time like I did, which was basically two years later, 24 months later, actually around this time, we were, we were negotiating around the time of the Super Bowl and around the time of the... Um, the um, the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, what's that called? It's the the Pro Bowl. Excuse me. We actually we actually negotiated the week of the Pro Bowl, and so I, I just thank God for how He led me and protected me, and may He do the same thing for you. I got some questions for you. You know, maybe it's about approaching your job situation differently this year. Maybe there's something that the Lord needs to place on your heart that you allow Him to speak to you about where you are concerning being out of debt or being in a situation where you're 
improve your health. You know, at the first of the year, we make all these resolutions. Well, it's good to do this year round, not just at the first of the year. By the way, in mentioning improving your health this week, I negotiated with uh, the First Baptist Church here in Burleson, Pastor Ronnie Marriott. And they are putting together a health clinic that's really interesting with the several doctors in our community. And so as soon as I get all the details, I'm going to present it to our leadership team about us partnering with them. They're actually going to open a health clinic that provides services to people that maybe can't afford health insurance or want another opinion that's more of a Christian base. And uh, this will include not only the initial doctor visits, but all the preliminary testing that needs to be involved. So there's a real partnership going on, and we as a church family want to be a part of that. That, not to provide just an, another medical alternative, but a faith-based alternative when it comes to health, when it comes to, you know, wellness. By the way, a friend of our church family, Dr. Rosado, is participating in that, and uh, it will be free to the community for those who, who want it, but it also will be a place of faith where you can believe God that maybe the answer is not always a prescription, even though there's nothing wrong with prescription medicine. There will be specialists there, but anyway, I'm going to get details about that in the days ahead. I, again, I'm sorry sort of blessed by the whole thing because it's a partnership of the body of Christ coming together and uh, the facil- facilities are already provided for right across the street from First Baptist Church. But the most important thing is it's a faith-based alternative to help encourage people to better themselves and letting God's temple, which is the body, be glorifying unto him. So exciting things are happening concerning improving your health. And hey, one of the most important questions of this year is how do you get God involved in these situations? Maybe it is to get out of debt. Maybe it is for the betterment of your body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's a different job situation. Maybe it's an, a fresh approach concerning your finances. Maybe there's a discipline there. Maybe there's an overspending that you know you need to cut back and cut away. I mean, let the Lord lead you. Don't discontinue the same patterns. Go in the direction, because I'm telling you what, God, your Father, wants to be involved with every aspect of your life, your body, your finances, your life as far as your, cur- your, your career or calling. He wants to be an intricate part of that. He doesn't want you miserable. He wants you enjoying life, not enduring it. Can I say, have a really good amen on that? Seriously, I mean, he wants you to enjoy your life. Most times believers are doing their life because they're not walking with God. They're sort of walking the way that they're trying to figure it out. <laughs> anyway, you know, I like what it says here in Luke eleven twenty three. 23. Again, this may sound intimidating to some, but it's a verse of scripture. Actually, it's one of my very first messages that I ever preached in Luke chapter 11. I have not used this verse of scripture in a long time, but it's, it sort of captures this walk with God and it sums it up pretty good where Jesus said in Luke eleven twenty three. 23, listen to this. I know this is directed to the point. He said, he who is not with me is against me. <laughs> and I know this sounds Southern Baptist, and thank God for my Southern Baptist roots. But, you know, again, I, I don't want to be found against God. I want to be found flowing with him. I want to be found doing what he's doing. I want to walk with him, and I want so bad for you as a believer to walk with him because I know walking with him and keeping pace and step with him is the wisest thing you can do. Number two, number one, of course, Enoch was walking the same direction is God. But number two, Enoch was walking in step with God. Over in Psalms 37, 24, listen to this. Psalms 37, 24. Psalms 37, 24. I want you to listen to this. And, um, this, this is a verse of scripture that so uh, many times if you'll hear me pray or pray with you, this is one of the verses of scripture that I go to. Psalms uh, 37, 23, it says, the steps of a good man or woman are what? Ordered by the Lord. Notice the steps. It didn't say the leaps and bounds. It said the steps. Everybody say steps. The steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. He delights in their way. God delights in your way when you're walking with him. Just like with that situation I was going through. It wasn't long after that that even the NFL did not work out. One of the greatest blessings in my life unfolded. I was invited to go speak to the University of Alabama football team, which is roll tide. Thank you, Jesus, tomorrow night for a national championship. You know I had to put that in there somewhere. <laughs> no, I got invited to go speak to the coaches. And I was so honored to be able to sit at Coach Saban's desk and visit with all of them. And it's such an honor. I mean, that's my. I'm an alumni. I mean, all my family went there. So, you know. I'm a part of the family tree with that's concerned. But my point with it is that God closed one door, but he opened up another door and he did it personally for me. I mean, I got to, to do something I always wanted to do and do it on my terms and there was no pressure to it. Like I say, when you trust in the Lord and 
you walk in his way, he'll delight in helping you in your way and do things special for you. Uh, that's just a blessing. You say, but Pastor Brian, that has nothing to do with my life. I want to tell you something. It may not be like going to the University of Alabama, but, but there may be something special about your life or something significant or something that you really desire in your heart to do. I always wanted to go there. I always wanted to do that, and I got a chance to do that. And so Psalm 27, look what it says here. It says, he delights in your way. In verse number 24, it says, even though you fall, you shall not be utterly cast down. The Lord upholds him with your hand. Isn't that awesome news? When you're walking the same way, walking in step with him, even though you may fall and stumble, he'll get you right back up. And I want to just ask you some questions. As a matter of fact, Miss Janet, if you don't mind, she's going to come up. She's going to be sharing a testimony here, Miss Janet White. Where did she go? There she is. If you'll come on around here and get ready. Uh, she's going to help me in just a second. What about, have you ever analyzed your walk with God? And so, Bill, what mic do you want her to have? D d just the ones, just pick up one, just pick it. Yeah, Dave will help you right there. Come on up, Miss Janet. There you go. Come on. She did not want to do this. Let's give her a hand. Come on, just a second. Now, hold on. I'm setting it up for you. Um, have you ever analyzed your walk with God? I mean, think about it. I mean, look at it from a scale to one to ten, and me and Miss Jam had this discussion with Steve and others, and, and, and ten being, you know, uh, the, the lowest and one being the best. Where are you with your walk with God? You said, Pastor Brian, I'm struggling with that. Well, that's, listen, that's why we've got an answer here. That's why the new year, and, and by the way, every day is a new beginning, not just because it's a new year. Every day with the Lord's a new beginning. You may have the hardest two weeks. Usually, what happens the first two weeks of January? Come on now. They're the hardest two weeks of the year. People die. People, things happen. Negative things happen. Unfortunately, just, just stupid stuff happens. I mean, what do we do here? Well, listen, that's not a time to run from God. That's a time to say, hey, I'm going to strengthen my relationship with the Lord. Maybe my relationship with the Lord is maybe just a five. Maybe it's an eight. Maybe it's a nine. Maybe it's a ten, unfortunately. But you want it to be a one. Because when it's a one, I promise you, everything in your life will be better. Will it not? You say, well, Pastor Brian, I don't understand everything that's happening. Listen, you don't need to understand everything that's happening. It's a walk by faith. And I just want to encourage you that on Wednesday nights from 7 to 8, we have had a powerful time for this last year. And Miss Janet and several others have been involved. And we do this via Zoom. And, um, and you, you, you can come to the facility if you want to. But Miss Janet, you come over here. You have really grown in this class. And by the way, you say, what are you talking about, Pastor Brian? I'm talking about this Growing Strong, the 2-7 series by the Navigators. This is an organization that we support. And they are multiplying discipleship across the world. I met with one of their executive directors this past Friday uh, via phone call. Miss Jan, I'm telling you what, the navigators are just absolutely producing disciple-making people for Jesus Christ, not only here in America, but throughout the earth. Good things are happening. Now, I know CNN and Fox and ABC is not telling you this, but I'm telling you great things are happening in the earth. People are being born again, and people in other countries that have denied the name of Jesus are being born again, and it is happening through the navigators. But Tell us, Miss Janet, what is happening to you on Wednesday nights? Put that mic up to your mouth and look in that camera, and here she is. <laughs> Originally, I had approached Pastor because I grew up in a Christian home, always had faith, always believed in God. I feel like my whole life, Jesus was my Lord and Savior. I took my kids to church when they were younger, but it was starting to hit me that a couple of my kids have fallen away from church. I have grandkids now that don't go to church. And so I was feeling the guilt of that because I knew I had the faith, but apparently I'm not sharing it with them enough to get them to want to be in church. So I talked to pastor about it because although I know I believe in God and I believe in Jesus, I don't know how to share that with them without just saying I have faith. Right. And so he introduced me to this series, and through this, I'm hoping that I will learn how to be a better disciple for my grandkids or That's for good. my kids or for people that I work with. Um, it's, it's, we're only about halfway through the first book, and right. already I can feel my confidence in my faith growing. And by learning scriptures, you know, memory scriptures, we're learning how to read our Bibles more effectively and take something from each reading rather than just turning the page and turning the page. That's true. So for me right now, I can feel the confidence growing in my faith 
and I'm feeling like by the time I'm done with this, I will have better tools to be able to disciple to them and explain to them why I feel like they need to be in church That's or good. need to have God That's in their good. life or have Jesus as their personal Savior, rather than just saying, because the Bible says so. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Let's give her a hand. That's excellent, Miss Jan. You did a good job. You just set that mic over there. And it's so true. Uh, uh, please, by the way, this is not theology or eschatology. This is just basic Bible facts as far as, uh, you know, growing strong in the Lord personally, which is what I'm talking about, devotion. Again, it's, you know, there's a lot of great resources out there, a lot of great teaching of the Word of God. But I like to say it like this. Listen, a key to spiritual growth to me is to study the Bible with other believers. That's why we have the ladies' Bible study. Study. That's why we have the men's breakfast, again, in tools like this. And by the way, we do it on Zoom where you can, you know, participate where you, if you don't want to be here or you just want to be in the comfort of your home, it's completely understandable. Donald here, he's traveling every week. He's in Virginia most of the time that he's on the road and he's participating in this class. He's not actually here. He's in a truck doing his job and he's been very faithful to participate and so are others. And again, these are just tools. Everybody say tools. Tools designed to help you grow in this devotion to God and to learn to walk with God. And again, Maybe the two sevens not for you, but I'm telling you what, it is one of the most foundational things that I've ever come across in all the years that I've served the Lord. And by the way, it's not only with us, but throughout the body of Christ, one of the key favorites as far as the, the discipleship material that I've seen. Hey, the next thing I want to talk about and the final thing is, number three, that there was no resentment between Enoch and God. Amos 3.3 3 says, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? Amos 3.3. 3. I think the beautiful thing between Enoch and the Lord was this, based on that verse of scripture, is the fact that Enoch didn't hold anything against God. So many times when we don't understand anything, we have a tendency tendency to blame God for what Satan does. You know, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, does he not? But God has come to give us life and give it abundantly through Jesus. But so many times, healthy relationships with the Lord, people don't understand something that's happening in their life, and they blame God for something that the devil does. And I can totally understand that. I mean, it can be easy, especially if you have religious people that come up to you and say, well, I guess the Lord's teaching you, or the Lord's trying to do something in your life by sending that sickness or disease. Listen, I just don't, I just don't believe that that's a good heavenly father, okay? A good heavenly father loves us. I don't think there's any cancer or any kind of disease in heaven. I think that, again, sickness and disease is of the enemy. I don't understand everything that goes on. I don't understand that people you pray for were healed. Some people prayed for that were healed somewhere. I don't, again, I know, I know that Jesus is good. God is good. Jesus came to redeem us from the curse of sin, sickness, and everything satanic. We just sang at Christmas time that he's the savior of the world, and I think that's that's where I've got to land my faith. But so many times people allow misunderstanding, misrepresentations of God, and they begin to blame God for things. That if you are the God that's in control, you know, I hate to say this, and this could be theologically challenging to some, but God is not in control as far as this earth goes. Think about it. I mean, if he was in control, he's doing a pretty poor job as far as our United States government. So I'm not going to blame God for our United States government. I'm going to say that they're in control. They're doing a bad God. I mean, a bad job. But if God was in control, he'd be doing a good job. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, he is in control of the end. I promise you, the moment a person's spirit leaves that body, God is in control. If they never made Jesus Christ the Lord of their life, he is definitely in control. Their next awaiting moment is the day of judgment. For a believer, hey, it's beautiful. They come on home to be with the Lord, even our dogs. You know, praise the Lord. I mean, you know, they had a dog that passed away this week. Anyway, you say, that, do you believe that dogs go to heaven? Listen, I, I, that's a whole other question too, okay? I don't know. All I know is there are horses in heaven because Jesus is coming back on a white horse. I happen to believe there might be dogs in heaven, okay? And maybe cats too, maybe. <laughs> So I'll even give kitties a little get in there, whatever. But anyway, listen, you know, God in his infinite wisdom, one beautiful thing about him is simply this. He doesn't want you or I to have relationships that have bitterness and resentment. One of the most poisonous things, in my opinion, is for people to hold resentment towards another person. And then they blame God. And then they blame God for that relationship when he had nothing to do with that. You know, I, I understand when somebody hurts another person. It's a terrible thing, is it not? 
It's terrible. But you've got to forgive. You've got to forget. And you've got to focus forward. And you've got to give that person to the Lord. Walking in unforgiveness towards someone really is hurting you. And blaming God for that situation, you say, well, Lord, I just wanted a friend. Or why is my family like this? Why is this person in my family did this to us or, or acted this way? And we have a tendency to blame God. Listen, that's, that's just not the way to go. To walk with God is to say, Lord, I just give these people to you. I'm going to trust you concerning this situation. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to trust you. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> allow you to dictate the peace of God in this situation as the more I give it all to you you every single day of my life. Casting the cares upon the Lord is not just something that I do. I mean, I, I practice it diligently. Every single day I wake up, I face cares and worries and anxieties just like any person. And in order to keep my walk with God at the place it has to be, I daily cast those things over. And sometimes I have to do it multiple times a day. Even Though my prayer time and study time is early in the morning, I'm telling you what, Satan's always unfortunately faithful to come at lunchtime, afternoon, evening. What do you do? You keep those cares casted upon the Lord and say, I'm going to walk with you, Lord. I'm not going to get into this place of worry and anxiety. I'm going to let the peace of God take over, and I'm going to trust you, and I'm just going to thank you for the victory. I'm going to thank you for walking this thing through. One of the most hardest things transitioning this year for me personally is the situation with my own father. I mean, you know, he's only given a matter of months to live or weeks to live. And so dealing with that on a daily basis is something you have to literally walk with God and keep that over in perspective. Yesterday was a very challenging day as I wrote the message or the outline for his own service. I mean, who wants to do that for your own parent? And I had a moment where I came to the end of it after I wrote it down. And I just, I really broke down because it was hard. You know, here's a man that has been so faithful to me in areas of, especially when it comes to this church, he's extreme faithfulness and loyalty to me in the starting of this church. He's the first person that put money into this church. He's the first person that I went to other than Pastor Nichols and shared the vision with. And from day one, he was with me 100%. And those things are important. Those things are vital to a, to a son, you know, to have your dad's support. But yet at the same time, there's a lot of other things that he had that were inconsistent. But my point with all that is no one wants to walk and, you know, doing those kind of things. But if you don't do them in the Lord and try to do them within your own self, that's a hard thing to do, ladies and gentlemen. But to know that I could do that yesterday and just walk away and uh, the peace of God. And sure enough, while I was doing that, I called my mother, and there was a person there at the house uh, that was there sent by this company that uh, we work with to uh, actually help um, help my mother with some natural things concerning taking care of my dad. And, and so I was glad to, you know, in the midst of casting that care, at the very time I was casting that care on the Lord, somebody was there to help my mother and actually spent some time with my dad. And my dad liked that young lady, responded well to her, and was open to her taking care of him. And, you know, that, that, what do you do there in a situation like? I kept giving it to the Lord. I kept giving it back to him when the thoughts of this, that, and the other would come. I said, Lord, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to walk in step with you. I'm going to trust you concerning this situation. Yes, I want longer life for him. Not 83 is not really what I had envisioned. I really didn't envision 83. His own mother lived to 95. I wanted longer life for him. But, you know, this is, I'm going to keep giving this back to you. And just like yesterday, you know, you get one of those phone calls where, Brian, we may need to make a decision on do not resuscitate order. I mean, those are, those are not fun at all. That is not a way you want to start a brand new year, is it? I mean, you know, you just don't want to be jumping into the new year having to make decisions like that. And even though I'm grown and even though I'm her son and she's got to make some of those calls, yet I'm the executor of the estate, and, she look, and I'm the oldest, and she looks to me to help her at this time to make these decisions. So what do you do? You make these decisions, and guess what you do immediately after you make these decisions? Give them to the Lord and say, Lord, they're yours. I will walk in peace. I'm going to walk in peace. I'm going to walk in peace. I'm going to walk in agreement. I'm not going to hold resentment towards anything or anyone, and I'm sure not blaming you, Lord. I'm sure not blaming you. This disease and this thing we're fighting is demonic, and it's from the pit of hell, and I stand against it. But I'm not blaming you. 
you. I'm walking in your peace, and I am thanking you that I have a relationship with you, and that thank God for heaven, thank God for the vision of heaven, thank God for the things that are happening in heaven, and thank God for heaven is real. And, uh, you know, again, that's to me, walking in a place of devotion to God is not just necessarily seeking him and using these tools and reading the Bible and quoting the word of God. It's coming to a place where you trust him in the hardest times of your life, the most challenging things you can go through. And I'm telling you what, the death of a parent is the worst thing probably you can go through as an individual, in my opinion. It is the worst of the worst, other than maybe the death of a child. But my, my point with all this is, if you want to do it without the Lord, wow, that's, you, you try that. I don't think it works. But when you want to have the peace of God and sleep well like I am and give it to the Lord and know that everything's going to be all right, know that everything is going to be okay, know that everything 100 years from now is going to be just fine, when you want that in your life, then trust him, and he'll take you down that pathway, and he'll help you, and he'll give you a peace. And just like yesterday, I mean, I waited for that right moment, and boom, it happened. I mean, the most beautiful outline of six things to share about my dad, the song, the scriptures, the way it flowed, the whole outline, I mean, just came like it was a dictation from heaven. And it was perfect for that moment. Why? Because I was trusting him with my walk with him. Oh, I could have got in fear and got in anxiety and, and gotten mad and said, this is not the way I want this to happen. But God arranged for me to have that moment with him and have that moment of just, how do I say it? I'm not much, I'm not much of a crier. It takes a lot for me to cry. I mean, it really does. Not saying nothing wrong with crying at all. I mean, nothing wrong with men crying at all. Nothing at all wrong with a man crying. But I'm telling you what, yesterday I had my moment. I mean, I had it. It hit me hard for just a moment. But at the same time, the peace of God, the walk with God that I have sustained me. And that's just what I encourage you with. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? Maybe it's not a situation like I'm going through. Maybe it's something else. But I want you to know, remember, the God of comfort through the Holy Spirit walks inside of you. And just like he walked with Enoch, who did not have the Holy Spirit, he walks inside of you even greater because we have the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the life and legacy of this man. I can't wait to meet him. I'm telling you what, he's a, he's a pretty awesome guy, is he not? I mean, he did great things for God, but he did it so that you and I could have even greater things. And if he could do it in that generation without this book and without the Holy Spirit, how much more can you and I? I'm telling you what, we've got tools. And by the way, thank God for this beautiful technology we have, the Internet. I'm telling you, I'm so thankful for it. I know there's a lot of perversion out there and all this other stuff, but thank God for some of these great things we have. People that can preach to you on the Internet, people that can have all kinds of things coming at you that are good and funny videos. i tell you what, I've been laughing at Tim Hawkins this last couple of weeks. I don't know about you, but I just needed a good laugh, okay? Uh, you know, thank God for somebody like him that has good Christian humor. I mean, I could tell his jokes just as good as he could. Anyway, but I come to the place where, you know, a merry heart's going to be better for me than, you know, woe is me and Charlie Brown life, okay? All right, then, Charlie Brown, I'm just not going to go that way, all right? And I'm going to laugh at things, and I'm going to enjoy things. And last night, I had the time of my life watching the Dallas Cowboys win. Man, that was so awesome. I wanted Dak Prescott to get five more touchdowns, to have a perfect NFL record but you say well what's that got to do with anything listen you got to learn to just stop life for a minute and enjoy it so many times we're enduring it and and we're waiting for that ultimate utopia but you know what today's the day that the lord has made and i will rejoice and be glad in it even though i did not enjoy writing my dad's funeral service yesterday i enjoyed the fact that when i made the phone call there was a lady there that he liked my mother liked and looks like she's going to come help us that will be a comfort to the whole situation you know why? Because I said, God, it belongs to you. It's your situation. If he goes to heaven next week, I mean, his blood pressure was pretty low this week. I'm thinking, I may have to turn around and go back there. If he leaves this earth, fine. He's going to be with you. I made peace with him the other day. We had our time together. We had our moment together. And I leave it with you. 
And I trust you because trusting you is the smartest thing to do. Walking with you because a thousand years from now, that's all that will matter. It will not be because of the cowboys or money or the house you lived in or the car you drove in or even the clothes you wore. And thank God for all those good things. And when we trust him, he gives us those those good things. But knowing him and having a legacy like Enoch has is the way I want to go. I don't want it to be said about Brian, he was a good shepherd or a good pastor. Yes, I want that said to a certain degree. I want it said to me that I walked with God and I helped you do the same thing. Because walking with God gives you the best life possible. Lord Jesus, we commit ourselves to you. We surrender these things to you. And Lord, we look to you for every area of everything. I pray for every person right now in this auditorium, those watching. Maybe they face the worst things they could face this week. Maybe they face things that have been challenging. Maybe they're having questions they simply don't understand the answers to. But I'm asking you right now to speak to hearts. God, people, whether it's a Bible study like this or a book to read or a podcast to listen to, lead us, Lord Jesus. Maybe it's a Bible reading plan. Maybe it's something we need to do in releasing others to you. Maybe it's that phone call, that text, that FaceTime. Maybe it's that visit we need to do. Show us what to do to make things right and peaceful, not only with ourselves, but most importantly with you. As we give you these things, Lord, we can trust you that you're the God of all grace, that you are so good, and that you protect us. That even though people have died this year for a lot of other things that we didn't understand, people in their, in their younger years, But we're trusting you right now that you're going to protect not only this family of believers, but the body of Christ, Lord. Give us wisdom concerning our bodies. Give us wisdom concerning our finances. Giving us wisdom concerning how to serve you, how to preach this gospel and make you known to others. In Jesus' name, we commit all these things to you, Lord, and thank you for your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen.